Hey everyone, Matt here from Herbal House, and in this video we're taking a closer look at the Master Controller. Now this new Master Controller is in fact designed for the Elite model, so that's going to be controlling your UV, your IR, and your main light. So that's going to give you complete control of your Elite in this beautiful simple controller. So stay tuned to find out all the bells and whistles this has to offer. Okay guys, so I've already unboxed it. I'm just gonna run through what you get. And of course you're gonna get the display here, the controller. There's a power cable coming out the end which is just gonna go into your extension lead or what have you. Powering the controller up. The next one along is the zero to 10 volt. So that's gonna include this communication cable which I've just run across into here and I've just plugged into the, wait for that to focus, the input of the LED there so you can see. So that's now connected to the LED. And then the next one along this little plug here is a temperature and humidity sensor um, to give us some values on the controller. So now that we've covered uh, what's actually included with the controller, I'll just run you through some of those features. So before we get completely started to actually programming this controller, there's something you need to make sure of. And if you go over here to your LED, you're going to want to set all of these dials. Let me just swing that around to EXT on all dimmers. So the EXT means external control and that is going to allow the communications to run through this cable and the light be operated through this controller. Okay, so now that you've got uh, those set to EXT, you're actually going to want to set up the controller initially. So you just wanna go up into the little menu up in the top corner here, and you wanna go system time. So this is where you're gonna set the time that the time clocks are going to operate off. So very important there, and of course the date. We've got temperature uh, units, so Celsius, Fahrenheit, brightness of the display, some other settings, uh, type box, and the screen lock. So you're not gonna worry about any of those realistically. Now, on the front display here, what you're gonna see, so if I can get this to stop shaking, you have got a temperature value and a humidity value, which is giving us a VPD reading. So don't stress too much about that. That's just taking parameters off the sensor here and generating a value for you to keep an eye on. And then in the, on just next to that, sorry, we've got a CO2 value and a PPFD value. So that would be uh, generating some values off a separate sensor, which these do not come with just yet. We're working on having those available very soon to get those parameters. Now, we're actually gonna work on controlling the light itself. So when you first power this controller up, you're gonna see you've got L1 over here, L2, L3, L4. Those are four channels of control that this controller offers, okay? Now, what you'll notice is you've only got three channels of control on your light, no problem at all, okay? One of those just isn't gonna be used. Now, we've already been playing around with this controller so you can see what it looks like, but we'll go step by step. So L1, that's gonna be your main light. So if you click on that, it's just gonna bring up this box here for adjustments. Now, it's displaying two spectrums for you to choose from. Don't stress about that, because no matter which one you pick, it actually makes no difference in this particular case. Those lights are preset for their fixture on the main light. No problem at all. Just here we have a off and an on, so you got manual control just to flick it on or off. And we've got a timer and we've got auto or manual. So setting it to auto means that this uh, light selection channel is going to run off the timer. So it's just connected here. Now I'll just quickly cover the timer because it's absolutely wonderful. Now, having a look here, we've got actually one, two and three settings for the operating time. So you can actually have three different uh, run schedules per day. And of course you've got the off time over here, that's the on time on the left, and a percentage value for the dimmer. So you can just hit those tick boxes if you'd like to turn those on, and just below that we've got cycle mode. So you can have it so the light cycles on for X amount of minutes and off for X amount of minutes. So it's really quite nice to be able to control it in three different sections, as far as a timer goes that is. Um, and we've got sunrise, sunset. So when you enable that, you'd hit activate, and you've got a ramp in and a range. So when you set it up and you hit the setup time to 10 minutes, that means it's gonna take 10 minutes to get to your set value. So let's say you got the light at 100%, when the starting value is 12%, it's gonna start at 12%, and within 10 minutes, it's gonna to get to 100%. So really good to know if you wanted to program your sunrise and sunset per channel. Now, next icon along is this one here. So this is a temperature, uh, essentially a safety. So with that disabled, it's got a range and an auto dim and a shutdown target. So you can program those values that should the temperature sensor, this one just here, reach said set value, your light will start to dim down to help remove some temperature from the room. And if it keeps getting hotter, it will hit the auto shutdown and completely shut off for you. So just keep that in mind. Not many people are gonna use it, I don't believe, but it's good to know that it is there. 
is the next icon is the PPFD value. So there's realistically nothing you can do with this just yet because nobody has a sensor to actually account for that value and have it coordinate your lights. But in most cases, people are just gonna be running at least channel one at full power um, when they're in flowering anyhow. So that's L1, let's move on to L2. Now, what I've already done is I have selected what this channel is. So you can just tell the controller what you think it is. So if I hit on, we get this really nice purpley blue color from the UV. So that's why I have just selected UV there. We have a dimming percentage and a sync. So when you hit the sync button, that's gonna link it with the first channel or the main light. So when the main, line, main light turns on, sorry, the UV is gonna turn on. We don't want that. We wanna operate on, on its own timer. This is already set to auto on the time clock and you would set the time clock value for how long you would like the UV to run. So in most cases, we recommend running the UV for about four hours in the middle of the light cycle, but with so many customizable options now, you can choose how you would like to cycle that and at different intensities to help get the most from you and your plants. So really nice feature to see how comprehensive you can tune this. You do have the sunrise sunset, of course, for all channels, even though you're probably not gonna use it on these supplemental spectrums. So just keep that in mind. Now L3 is non-use because as you can see, if I turn that on, nothing changes. So we're just gonna leave that as non-use, no trouble at all, and move on to the last one, which is L4. So I've already set that to 660 because when I turn it on, there we go, we've got our 660 reds and our 730s. So with that set there, basically you can do the same thing. You can jump into your time clock and you can set the values to suit your needs on how long you would like to run this, whether you use it as just a sleep initiator or you do use it to enhance the Emerson effect and increase photosynthesis performance. But just keeping in mind with a spectrum like this, if you do overexpose, you can expect a bit of stretch. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so now that we've set those up, of course, you've got these buttons here for manually cycling it on, those particular spectrums. Good to know, you're probably never gonna do that unless you just wanna pop in the room and flick the lights on while you're working or cleaning or what have you. Now we do have a scene setting down here. So scenes are something you can program to set up your spectrums pretty much if you want to cycle them. We, we reference them as scenes, but it would be if you'd want a combination of 50% of your L1, 30% of your L2, and 40% of your L4, for instance, you would program to a scene because that would allow you to basically customize them. Now, in growing operations, this is not going to be a frequently used feature. You're going to be using this again, like if you're cleaning the room and you just want the right amount of brightness, you can program it to scene one for when you're getting in there and doing some maintenance. So realistically, when it comes to bells and whistles, these controllers are starting to offer absolutely everything we would really hope to see in terms of controlling something as complicated or complex as the Elite Series lights. Now that we have full control over the three channels, and of course we do have an option there in the near future when lights start to offer four channels. We're not too sure what that spectrum would be yet, but it's nice to know that it's there. And like I said, later on we will have CO2 sensors and things available for these so they can just plug in and give you some values. So really nice controller and we really think they're gonna do you well. Now, one final thing to mention. So of course we've got this connected to just one light here as you can see on the input but we do have an output port so just keeping in mind that that will allow you to daisy chain from there using a communication cable and to the next light so as easy as that to link up multiple of these lights and control them off a single controller so just really good to know how versatile these things are so they've got some commercial features for the domestic grower absolutely fantastic to see so i hope you've enjoyed this video if you have any questions at all please get in touch with us here at herbal house thanks for watching